What's going on, Seven Footers gang? It is Jenna and Gerard back for yet another episode that is jam-packed. Guys, we talked to you last week. We said that we would talk to you after all the moves happen, and man, does Gerard have a lot to say today. <laughs> I mean, I always have a lot to say, but, you know, I, it's just, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> the funniest part about this show, too, is that, like, it's it's our show it's our baby and before we you know we chat and we do the pregame notes and everything and he treats this like it is a face-off like i'm not i'm not, I'm not telling you anything we're not getting into it i'm waiting for the pod and I, so it's a surprise <laughs> so everything you hear is genuine just know that yeah yeah i mean look we got to keep some air of mystery out here we can have the people be like oh this is scripted nah this ain't scripted uh, we're just gonna fire off our takes and you know but honestly as, yeah it isn't but as just usual so as usual I try to offer the nuanced, balanced approach and not while out with like narratives and all this hot stuff out in the streets. But we'll we'll get into job. it. That's my yes, job. Yes, that is your job. Yes. And I'm, we work so well together. And I'm there to bring you back in and reel you back in like, okay, calm down. Here's what it is. <laughs> it's the same way when we're out at the bar. He's like, Jenny, you need to like calm yourself yes. down. I'm like, no, I can't. A hundred percent. That is exactly how it is out at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Before we get into some really bad conversations. Um, Let's talk about the trades because trade deadline week is officially over and a lot of moves happen. I think they kind of, I think they broke a record. Um, it was quite a lot. Yeah. It was like 30 some moves, like the most in a while. So again, I don't think I would use the word blockbuster, um, yeah. but definitely some interesting pieces going to interesting places. So let's open it up with LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay. He had a buyout with the Spurs. No one really knew where he was going. At least I didn't really. And then what happens? The Nets add another piece to the puzzle. <laughs> I just don't understand. Where, like, are, is it an endless bag of money? Is it, like, what is so special? Don't get me wrong. BK's rocking, you know, on and off the court. But dang, okay. Now, this is interesting because now the league has gone into panic mode. Um, you know, they're, they're going to all try to act cool and this and that, but like, did you see the, uh, before I give it to you, Gerard, did you see, um, Nash, Steve Nash in going yep. like, I, I was, I, I was on that, I was on that conference call. Indeed I did. <laughs> Give it to me. Like, what is the feel around, again, like you just said, you were in the conference call. So what is the feel right now around the league and inside the association when it comes to this piece being added to the Nets? Are people scared? Are people panicking? What's going on? It, it's just so funny to me, Jenna, because it, it's just, and this is how media works now. And let's just take a step back for a minute, right? Okay. So first, it's Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Okay, cool, whatever. They get James Harden, and everybody's like, oh, like the super team, whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. Then they get Blake Griffin, and then they get uh, LaMarcus Aldridge. Everybody's like, oh, my God, they're the Monstars. Like, they're just trying to take over the NBA. The memes were good. I mean, I mean look, social media is here. Jokes greater than facts, always on social media. We know that. But it's like, if you want to have an intelligence, nuanced conversation around this, let's do it, right? Like, let's actually talk about what this means and what matters. The problem is, is that, you know, you have these endless talk shows with Stephen A saying the Nets are trying to steal a champ and like all this ridiculous shit because you have to fill 24 hours of television, right? So you have to keep talking about silly stuff. Right. So instead, what do you show? You show the combined all-star appearances that all the Nets players have. And when you just look at that number, it's quite a lot, right? Alarming. But here's the reality of that. Only three of those players have made the all-star game Anytime recently, those being Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. I like to use the R word. Yeah, recently. Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge are nowhere near their all-star peaks. Not even close. You know me, I'm a stats guy, I look up the numbers. I was looking at their estimated plus minus, both Blake and LaMarcus. Plus mm -hmm. minus, your estimated plus minus tells you 
how much your team scores outscores its opponent relative to their, you know, the, 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 the strength of the opponent, your teammates, the opponents on the floor, all that stuff. It just takes into account basically how good is your team when you are on the floor, all right? LaMarcus and Blake are in the bottom half of the NBA in terms of estimated plus minus. Uh, if you don't know what that means in layman terms, not good, okay? They are not good at all, okay? And here's what's going to happen, however, though, because as humans, we don't know how to quantify things like that, right? When we watch basketball, most people only remember the end of the game, right? If it's a tight game, who hit a winning shot? Like, the stuff in the middle, irrelevant. Nobody pays attention to that. But it's like a book, right? All the pieces and all the pages matter. It isn't just what happens in the last second. It's everything that led up to that last second. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to predict this. In an important playoff game, an important playoff series, Blake and or LaMarcus are going to either hit a shot or make a play that's going to have the Nets win that game. And the reaction and commentary is going to be, you see, I told you, these guys are too good, blah, 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 blah. But no one's going to look at the million steps before they got there in that game, right? And I would, I would wager to say, when Blake and LaMarcus are on the floor in the postseason, it's going to be a net negative, right? Because LaMarcus today said, what? we asked him, why did the Nets bring you here? He's like, oh, for what I can contribute on defense because of my switchability. I was like, um, my guy, we seen the tape in San Antonio. You don't switch. You play drop coverage because we seen you trying to switch out on guards and it ain't cute because you're not quick, right? You can't, you can't move laterally and you can't cover anybody. You have to actually guard from the paint, drop back. That guards feast on him. Matter of fact, you were so bad, they benched you for, for Jakob Pertl, right? That's why they bought you out. Because they were like, nah, dude, Jakob Pertl's actually better than you. So, yeah, we're going to play him and not you. But we're going to find out some place for you to go. But people, right, you know, the casual fan, that's not nuance they see. All they see is, ooh, Marcus Aldridge, he used to be an all-star. Ooh, Blake Griffin, he used to dunk over cars and be an all-star. These guys are... They remember them in their primes. Right. Well, well, well past their primes. As a matter of fact... LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin now on this Nets team, it's gonna it's kind of problematic for Steve Nash in a way. They're all saying the right things. We hear what to win. We want to do all the right things. But you know what's going to help you win? Keeping Nicholas Claxton on the floor. Because of all your bigs, including DeAndre Jordan, he's your best. He can switch one through five and do everything. Those other dudes? No, not so much. Well, you bring up Claxton. He's playing incredible. He, honestly, every time he is in the paint, he is a monster. He is grabbing rebounds, grabbing balls. He doesn't care who's around him. He's going to get it, and he's going to either smash it in or just drive it to the basket. So, great. Yes, Claxton is playing amazing at the center position. You also have DeAndre Jordan. So, the Nets come out and say that LaMarcus Aldridge is going to spend most of his minutes at the center position, probably off the bench. So, with that impacting the both of these big men, how is this going to work also with Blake Griffin? Not to mention, LaMarcus hasn't played a game since March 1st, ironically, against the Nets. So yeah. how is this going to work? Do you, Are there too many cooks in the kitchen? Here's what I'll say. I don't think there's too many cooks, Jenna. What it ultimately is, is it's going to give Nash some semblance of versatility. Not a lot. Some, okay? And the reason why I say some is because if I'm Nash, I'm looking at it as, okay, where and how can LaMarcus and Blake and DeAndre help me defensively in the playoffs, right? Where Nick may be, you know, because he's just either young or for as tall as he is, Nick isn't as thick as those guys, right? Like they're just more solid, more muscular and heavy. They're, they're, they're also, they're grown men, right? Nick's 22. He's a kid still. Okay. And when you look at that, you think about, hmm, who's a center in the East they can run up with that will punish them inside because they don't have enough size oh that might be Joel Embiid in the Philadelphia 76ers so in a matchup against Embiid maybe I could see some spot minutes for DeAndre I mean you know some kind of platoon of DeAndre and and LaMarcus and Blake right just to give you more size to manage Embiid because he's a monster like Joel Embiid is just huge and a big man and he's too big for Nicholas Claxton right too big and too strong so the idea yeah. there is can those guys help out but there is a tax for playing those guys. And that tax is 
when you pull those guys out into pick and roll, they're screwed because they cannot move their feet. They're just not they're just not quick enough. They, they can't do it. So any little guard or any quick person, you get if you get a caught on a three or a two, they're they're getting cooked because they cannot keep up. Nick Claxton, however, will not get cooked. There was a game against Portland recently on, on that trip they were just on. Nicholas Claxton got switched onto Damian Lillard. Now, normally when a big gets switched on Damian Lillard, advantage Dame, right? Because he's just quick and he's Damian Lillard and all that. Claxton stayed right with him. That is a skill set that he has that those other guys don't. So in the playoffs, when everybody's switching, and because in the playoffs, what's your goal? Hunting a mismatch. Who I want to get my best guy on your worst guy. That, that's that's the goal, right? So yeah, let me get. Are you kidding? Dame getting caught on the Marcus or DeAndre? He's gonna cook them fools all the time. So your goal is how do I eliminate that from happening? With a guy like Claxton, it's switchable. You're good because he can stay with him. I'm not saying he's gonna shut Damian down, but he has the ability to switch and stay in, and keep Damian in front of him. Those guys have no chance, literally none. So I mean, this is this is what we're talking about here, and it's it's interesting to see what Nash will do. It is. He came out, obviously, you were on the press conference call, you know, defended it, said, it's not like we did anything illegal. That's the point of the league. You're supposed to stack your roster, all that. Agreed. Agreed. And, of course, you're the coach. You have to say that about your team that you're stacking. But um, regardless of that, so before we move on, where does that put the Nets for you? Obviously, they added fuel. So does this make them even a better title contender? And should the Lakers be Worried, although Jeannie Buss recently on first take said, you know, we're the reigning champs. Like, should they be worried? I mean, look, if you're playing the Nets in the postseason, Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge, these aren't the people. You ain't worried about them, people. You're worried about Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. That is your concern, right? Like, because that three-headed monster is it. The question is, right, can they get enough? Because they'll have enough offensively. They'll be fine. Can they get enough stops when they need to? That is the question, right? Defense for this team. Because contrary to what everyone thinks, you have to get stops. The Nets don't need to be a top five defense, and they'll, they won't be one because they don't have the, the, the personnel and the disposition to be that. But they're going to need to get stops and string them together when needed in the postseason against elite competition. Can they do enough of that? Because offensively, they're a juggernaut. I mean, and remember, they've been doing all they, they've been doing all this. Kevin Durant hasn't played in like a month. I mean, so Well, yeah. I mean, I mean that's because you know. uh James Harden's been balling and, yeah. you know, no, no need to rush KD back. Insane numbers and making a big MVP case for himself. And uh quick quick last note here. Did you see his guest the other night at the game? Uh, little baby. Yes, little baby was in, was in the house. Nothing like throwing <laughs> it in people's faces. That little baby, the one you left the Rockets while you were partying with when everybody was, no offense, calling you the F word, fat. And then you come out here in Brooklyn, you shit on him, and then you bring the baby. Little baby, what you know what I mean, how I get with the babies. To the game. It's um... There's no better move Listen, that. you know, as Harden said after the game, he's like, you know, it's one of my homies. It's always fun when your homies can pull up to the game and see you play. Like, listen, these guys live in a different world than we do, right? They are, they're millionaires. They're extremely good at what they're, the top one half of 1% of one half of 1% of their profession, right? Like, they're the elite of the elite. Like, it's a, it's a lifestyle in a world that we know nothing about. But, you know, kudos to them. Do your thing. Big, big facts. Let's move on here because more moves, more power moves were made. Uh, Speaking of L.A., Andre Drummond, the big man who obviously parted ways with the Cavs, hasn't played for a minute with them. They agreed mutually, you know, go the separate ways. The Lakers have picked up the big man. Now, obviously, I have some stats here to catch you guys up on because the Lakers posted an interesting thing here. Now, he's led the NBA in... Second chance points five times, led the league in offensive rebounds for seven seasons in a row, led centers in steals for the last four years straight, and the list goes on. Rebounding accolades, seventh highest career rebounding average in the NBA history. So let's just get to the point here. How much of an asset is Andre Drummond and what he can do to the Lakers and their style of play, the roster that he's surrounded by, you know, when LeBron James and Anthony Davis are healthy. But how much of a game changer is this? I mean, this is what's so funny, Jenna, right? 
The internet going a buzz about LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin, who, as I've detailed, are not good anymore. Meanwhile, no one's... Where's that same energy about the Lakers getting Andre Drummond, who is clearly superior to both of those players at this stage of their careers? Yes, he does not have the accolades that they have, but today, at this stage of their careers, which, by the way, we play basketball in the present, not in the past. So it doesn't matter what you did 10 years ago. It only matters what can you do today. Today, Andre Andre Drummond is by far a better player than Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge. I mean, so <laughs> I mean, so where 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 is our Lakers or the Monstars? I don't I, I don't I don't hear that talk. <laughs> like, well, I mean, you know people who who's on the Lakers. You know people love to hate on my guy. <laughs> Well, it, it's just so funny to me, right? And I like uh, Andre Drummond of so of the signings we just said, right? Lamarcus, Blake, and Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond by far is going to be much more impactful and help. You listed everything he does: offensive rebounding, right? Been leading the league for the last however many billion years. Uh, number one in second chance points. I mean, he's going to be a load, and he's young. He's what twenty seven? I mean, he's guess what? Young, young. Guess what? In the playoffs. You need young legs when you're an old team. Uh, Newsflash, Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, not young, old. LaMarcus Aldridge, 35, Blake Griffin, 32. So, right. yeah. Right. So It's I mean, been a minute. It, it's been a minute since these dudes have been spry. And again, it's, what, it's like I said before, they're going to make one big play, each of them, in a game the Nets win, and it's going to distort everyone's image of, oh, you see? And it's like, no, 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 no. And meanwhile, because Andre Drummond won't be asked to do that. See, he's not going to hit any game-winning shots or do any of those things that are going to help the Lakers right. that are going to be visible to your eye to see. But he's going to do all these little things that the untrained eye doesn't see that's going to allow the Lakers to win games much more easy, easier and much more comfortable. But again, a casual fan will be like, oh, he didn't do anything. Meanwhile, right. but Blake hit that shot. It's like, that's not how this works. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Andre Drummond is there, <clears throat> and it's no secret, he's there to have a big defensive presence on the floor. He even said in the last month uh, that he had, hadn't had played, that he stayed working. He had a good month of work. He said he thinks his quick feet, quick hands are going to help this team. And this was interesting that I wanted to get your thoughts on. He said, uh, obviously, after the signing, quote, I think for me coming here, AD could slide into the four and play his true position and be very good at it without taking all the bumps and bruises I do at the five. So that's interesting. He wants to go in. He wants to play the five. He wants to take the brunt of the work and take some of the load off of AD. He said, I'm not here to steal anyone's shine, X, Y, Z. So tell me what your thoughts are about this quote right here. Because that, that's, it's, it's pretty strong. That's a very mature quote from a, a young man who, you know, people were like, we're not sure if he's any good. I mean, I've said it, right? It's like, ah, oh, is he just like a, a, a bad stats, you know, a good, good stats, bad team kind of guy, right? Because he plays in Cleveland. Despite Cleveland's putrid play, which is, I mean, let's just be honest, his defensive box plus, defensive plus minus has been excellent every season he's been there. Excellent. By far better than the two I mentioned over in Brooklyn. And here's what's going to be interesting, and he said it himself. It's the role he's going to play here. No, 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 my dude. We ain't running no plays for you. No, 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 no. Rebound. Give us extra possessions. Box out, right? Do all those little things. That's going to be huge. And putting AD at the four, which is, of course, AD's natural position. Now, they'll probably close with AD at the five, obviously, because when they want to go ultra, you know, quote unquote, small and really like get teams like, here's our best closing lineup, AD would be at the five. But here's something else Andre Drummond gives. I mentioned about the Nets and playing Embiid, right? Big center in the Eastern Conference. The, the likely league MVP and best offensive player in the league this year is Nikola Jokic. Oh, wouldn't it be so nice to have a big man like Andre Drummond to throw at Nikola Jokic, right? So that way, AD doesn't have to deal with that all game. And then late in the fourth, if it's a close game, we can take Drummond out and put AD on Jokic, right? Like, so he's fresh and not taking that bruising all, all game long. It's brilliant. And he is going to help this team tremendously. Look, the Lakers were already the number one defense, right? Now you add another defensive-minded player, right? So it's almost like they're doing the reverse, right? Nets, mm-hmm. we're going all offense. 
Lakers? All right, we're going to go all defense, <laughs> right? I mean, and it'll you be You know what they say, Gerard, defense wins games. Well, no, so that's not. See, you, you get offense sells tickets, defense wins <laughs> I'm championships. I'm just trying to have a case for LeBron James. <laughs> Listen, Damn it. and I mean, this is the matchup that everyone's going to want to see, right? I mean, let's let's just get, let's cut to the chase. We want even the old school narrative of Kyrie and LeBron. I oh, still love seeing. We I want, mean, it's amazing. We want fully healthy Brooklyn versus fully healthy Los Angeles. That's the matchup everybody wants, and oh. hope maybe we will. But look, there's a long way to go before we get there because there are good teams out in the West that are not the Lakers, and good teams in the East that are not the Nets. So long way to go before we get there, and we have to. And assuming that they're all healthy, that's a big assumption because right now they're not both teams. So we'll see. But that's the matchup everybody wants to see. Very true. Same, hoping that we get a lot of good uh, content out of that. So really quick, before we wrap this one up, you know I love a good narrative. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't believe you didn't even see this one coming. Andre Drummond's tweet from August 11th, 2011. Quote, one of my goals in life is to meet and play with or against at King James. End Mm -hmm. quote. Well. Well. And then... He was asked about it after this signing. (laughs) And he said, quote, for it to come back full circle and have the opportunity to do it, it's just crazy how time works. Yeah. And and it's interesting, too, right? Because, you know, you you can quibble with LeBron about a lot of different things, whatever. Drummond's going to come in and know what his role is on this team, right? And LeBron will remind him if he's unaware of what his role is on this team, right? (laughs) Um, and yeah. it, 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 it's just, it is, and again, this team, remember they won the title last year. So Caruso and Schroeder and Kuzma and all these, all these and KCP, all these role guys, they know, and let's not forget they got Montrez Harrell. And I mean, look, this is going to be a formidable team to stop again, assuming all health, right? That, that if everyone has to be healthy because if AD and LeBron aren't healthy, forget it. But assuming all health, and that's the other funny thing about this, right? Just to go back to this dichotomy. The Nets are the quote-unquote monsters. But look at the names I just rattled off on the Lakers, right? LeBron James, Anthony Davis, uh, Montrezl Harrell, right? Andre Drummond. I mean, these aren't exactly scrubs, right? I mean, you got right? Drummond's made all-star games before. Like, Montrezl has been six-man of the year. I mean, these, these aren't crappy players, right? No, so let's but the not thing is people like, are forgetting about it. If they don't see the names that they know they see or this and that. Well, that's what it is. It's at, names. Yeah. It's names. It's names. And for mm-hmm. a long time in this league, Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge were names. They ain't names now. I mean, yes, it's still their names, of course. But they, they ain't those people anymore. <laughs> like, it's been a long time since they've been those people. So, you know, it, it, it'll be interesting. It will be very interesting. Okay. Moving on, because we have moves everywhere. We need to talk about the big question mark that was around Aaron Gordon and is no longer because he is now repping a Nuggets jersey. And he made his debut against the massacre on the Hawks the other night, uh, going 6 of 9 for shooting, scoring 13 points to help them completely crush them. Okay, we established that. But... Did you notice the instant chemistry with mm-hmm. Nikola Jokic, on mm-hmm. an awesome dunk, mm-hmm. and everything else? I mean, after his debut, Aaron Gordon said that he sees no limits for this team. Mm-hmm. And as long as they stick together, there's no stopping them. We have all the pieces we need. We have the depth. And we have a lot of great spots offensively, defensively. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. Uh, look, one of the great things about... Um... Aaron Gordon here now on on the Nuggets he's not going to be asked to do something that he can't do right so we see him in Orlando as sort of like the lead guy and what that is and you know it was fine I mean <laughs> it was you know they weren't I mean, great what's Orlando doing <laughs> right I mean they weren't great but they, you know they were an eight seed and you know it was what it was but now he's not going to be asked to be their best player Best case scenario, he's what? Their third best player? Mm -hmm. Probably going to be asked to be their fourth best player. So now Mm -hmm. what happens? He is super overqualified now to be a number four, right? Or even a number three. But that's a beautiful... don't think about these things. But that's a beautiful thing, right? I don't 
Aaron, no, no, you don't got to initiate offense. No, 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 Don't worry, my guy. See, see this dude, this is a seven-footer from Serbia right here? He got that covered. He initiates <laughs> all our offense. All you do, you cut to the rim. You do, We got you because because as you, everyone knows who watches the Nuggets. If you cut, Nikola will pass you the ball. You're getting mm-hmm. the rock, right? And so we saw that a little bit on display, and you said the instant chemistry, and it's because Jokic is so good at seeing all the angles and knowing, right? And he's going to... He will pass you open. He will... Listen, Nikola's like, whatever's going to do to make the defense have to think, too many guys we have to worry about, right? It's easy to guard isolation and one-on... I'm not going to say easy, but it's predictable, right? Because you know, all I got to worry about is this person in front of me right now. But if you got to think about, oh, wait, ball screen coming. Ooh, cutter... That's a lot to think about, right? And a little pause when you're unsure of what to do, that's all That's all these guys need. And with someone as skilled as Jokic passing the ball, ooh, man, they're going to carve teams up with that. And Aaron Gordon also gives them size on the wing to defend should they have to play the Clippers. That's someone they can throw at, Paul George or Kawhi Leonard. If they have to play the Lakers, someone to throw at, LeBron James, right? This is a... I love this pickup for the Nuggets. And again... This is a team that I think is going to fly a little bit under the radar. Nobody's really talking about them. It's, you know, Lakers, Clippers, and they're going to they're gonna mess somebody up. They're really going to mess someone up. Well, also, too, I mean, people forget about how good uh, Aaron Gordon is. I mean, because you get sucked into that kind of, no offense, bad team kind yeah. of vibe. No doubt. So it's going to be interesting. I like this team. I think, again, like you said, they're going to surprise us. So let's move on here because I know you enjoy this next one. Nikola Vucevic to the Bulls. Seven foot sniper, is that what we like to call well, him sometimes? He's, yeah, sometimes. Not a sniper, but. I mean, he's, yeah, he's he kind can, of a sniper. You know, he, sniper like things. Sniper like things. Sniper like things. Look, I mean, Orlando clearly cleaning house, right? <laughs> and and they're, they're like, we're doing the rebuild over here with our young guys Cole Anthony, uh, Mark L. Fultz, uh, Jonathan Isaac when he comes back off injury. I'm assuming Mo Bamba. Right. Okay. So we'll see what we'll see what that is. But the Bulls are out here, you know, and of course they they moved Evan Fournier, which we'll get to. The 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 Bulls. I mean, okay, you got Vooch to pair to pair with Zach Levine. Okay, it's a nice little pick and roll thing you got going, maybe. But um, all that to do what to be what Orlando has been the past couple of years, which is an eight seed. I mean, I, I, all right, like cool, but I, I'm just not sure that that's like. The needle mover that's like okay we can build around these two and this is like our championship core like i i don't know but listen these these teams want to make the playoffs i understand owners want that revenue i get it but all that to be an eight seed and get blasted in the first round or and in this case actually because we have to play in tournament even if you're the eight seed you're not guaranteed to automatically go one you're gonna have to play the one of those one of those uh, teams below you so you know it'll be interesting the interesting. Um, another interesting move is Evan Foreigner to the Celtics. I mean, let's not forget that the Celtics still have Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. I mean, they're rocking out there. Obviously couldn't find their footing in the beginning of the season. So do you think that this move helps, this move fits in or helps I their mean, identity? It, or it, did they even have their identity yet? Well, Fournier, like, I, Again, Orlando, you know, they're, they're starting over, so they're, they're moving 48. Look, he's a good player, right? I mean, shooting hard. As I just botched the poor French man's name. I know. It's okay. I know, he says. <laughs> I know. It, I was like, you I was. Didn't even stop me. Yeah, I didn't. I was just going to let you roll with it. Uh, Fournier is a, a, you know. a good shooter from three, right? He's shooting career highs this year. I mean, look, he, he's an instant offense kind of guy, and I think he'll help them. But, you know, defensively is where they've been struggling, right? And so I don't know how much Fournier helps with that. Um, Look, the Celtics have other problems, right? And their other problems are is that as good as Brown and Tatum are, they are not quite elite in the playmaking category yet, right? In terms of playmaking for other people. Um, They've gotten better, but they're not at that elite level yet, right? And that's the thing. You need to have people who are elite at creating for themselves and also others in the playoffs. And right now, you know, uh, they don't have that. And, you know, Fournier will be interesting. Look, the, the Celtics... Danny's gonna have to do some things to reshape this roster. Um, you, you got your two pieces in in Brown and Tatum. We know that, but what else you got, right? What else are you going to to put around them to get yourselves, you know, to that level? Because you know, and I'll just throw this in there. Uh, we were Kyrie was the problem, right? 
That that was the thing. That that's why this team couldn't achieve its its ultimate goal. All right, well, Curry been gone for two years now, right? You seemingly still have the same problems. So, are we sure that Curry was the problem, or are there other situations going on there? Just you know, food for thought. Yes, you do. And and it, and you know me. I, I'm not a Kyrie defender. I'm just basically putting it out there that you know, it, it's as with everything else. It's never one thing or one person, right? It's right. a multitude of things. Exactly. And no, I, I loved that you defended Kyrie there. I'm sorry, I just got a little bit emotional. Recent news has me jittery. Oh, we know, um, we know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am not even going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but there's something else that we need to talk about. Norman Powell to the Raptors. Thoughts on this? Because I like it. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the uh, well, I mean, actually, I, I botched that in the notes. Norman Powell from the Raptors to the Blazers. The, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. I'm, it's fine. I'm it's, disgusting. It, like, no, 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 no. He's on the Raptors. He's and on the, then the yes. 905 because you girl, you girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you're repping? I see you. I see you. You girl knows. And I just at, literally read the show notes like an idiot. I see No, you. Portland Trail Blazers, but I did mean it when I said I liked it. Uh, um, <laughs> honestly. Look, the Blazers are doubling down on offense, right? Like, I mean, they, they are not a good defensive team. We, we know that. Um, and look, okay, let's double down on offense. I, I I think in his career, he's been a better player than on defense than Gary Trent Jr. has. Gary Trent Jr. is who um, was moved out. But, you know, and along with Rodney Hood, but and they were both fan favorites. And, you know, the, the Blazers organization yeah. developed um, Gary Trent Jr., but look, Norman Powell's had a career year, and he will help them, right? As just another like, expl- and he, I mean, Powell's been incredible this year. They're they're going offense. They're like, look, we are going to just try to outgun people. And I'm going to tell you, you don't want to really play Portland, right? In the in the first round of the playoffs, right? Whatever seed they're going to end up being, because they're just they're going to be a nightmare for you. Because yeah. trying to trying to shut them down is just going to be more work than you than you realize. And look. They may they may be able to upset somebody. You never know. I'm not, I'm not. We get to see where everything shakes out and who goes where. But I I like this for them because they're doubling down on who they are. They're like, look, offense is where we we're making our, our money right now. Let's just go all in on offense. And I think it's no surprise that Portland is a postseason team. That's oh, just yeah. Oh, yeah. where they thrive, how they thrive. And, and CJ's back. I mean, look, they oh. they're Damon CJ. We know. Look, you know, I love that backcourt. That. I have questions about how that backcourt can go deep into the postseason just because there's a tax you pay when your two best offensive players are small, right? Like, it just it hurts you defensively. But, listen, they, they made a run to the Western Conference Finals uh, two years ago now. Um, so, things break right. Who knows? Maybe. Hey, hey. Uh, last note on Norman Powell, because, again, like I said, uh, you know, I love a good narrative. Mm-hmm. And Twitter was talking when he forgot that he played, that he didn't play for the Raptors anymore when he played the Raptors the other night. Did you see that video? I do. <laughs> I love when that happens. I love it. I think it's so funny. Like when we, I sent you the Blake Griffin one. Yep. Clapping and then like stopping. Uh, they being like, it. ooh. <laughs> um, let's, we, we got to move on here, Gerard, because last week we introduced you guys to a little beefy segment <laughs> and again it's not a segment but like there's just, beef there's just happening beef. Yeah, so beef. we just gotta talk about Always. it I, mean, I love a good roast beef sandwich you know gravy <laughs> so <laughs> the gravy this week is uh kd and social media <laughs> while you may not be surprised when i say it like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you are going to be surprised with who he's uh beefing with arguing with or beefing with i should say um i I hope this is not real but it definitely seems real obviously because michael rapaport verified it on twitter damn it so he posted the screenshots for all of us to enjoy read and see which we all did and so apparently correct me if i'm wrong Gerard, michael rapaport or kd has an inner a past interview in december of 2020 on um inside the nba with Shaq, chuck all the guys Michael Rappaport says something in social media that he's soft, he would cry no matter what's said to him, blah, blah, blah. KD slides in his DMs recently. I don't know if he just found out about these comments or what, but he goes, three words. I don't even think you could categorize the first two as words because they're just letters. (laughs) Well, you a bitch. (laughs) It's just so funny because he sends him like a screenshot of an old tweet. (laughs) 
in his DMs and calls him a bitch. So they're going back and forth. I mean, there's a lot of explicit language here. Basically, if these DMs are real that Michael Rappaport has shared, KD allegedly threatens him, calls him a number of names, uh, dickhead being one of them, pussy. I'm sorry. I'm not even know if I should be saying these things. I'm very sorry. Um, and a lot of other things that are not okay for TV or podcasts. Literally <laughs> not okay. Um, but don't get me wrong. Michael Rappaport went back once in this spat right. um, and said, just do the effing interview. If you're upset about something, they've said something. You up there looking like you were going to cry and shit. It's funny. Um, and then, oh, last note before I give you the floor here, uh, KD also mentioned, you know, he did throw a diss at Chuck saying that, you know, the questions that he had weren't great. I'm paraphrasing. This is not a quote. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, if this is all true, um, yeah, they're allegedly going at it in the DMs and Michael Rappaport made it public on Twitter. So, um, yeah, call them a snake. Uh Hashtag I'm the real MVP. Um, what are your thoughts? I can't even go on about this. It's so silly. I this smells like a staged social media event to me. That's really that, that's what it smells like to me. I, I just particularly because it, it and I don't know the timing of, of it. Like I know that, again the interview was old, but the but the comments seem to be from today. It's like did Rappaport just start commenting about an interview from December of 2020? Like why? It, right. Yeah. This, I'm sorry. Um, correction on my part. This um, exchange happened back in December when the interview happened. I'm sorry. That was a got uh, it. Mishap okay. On my part. Got it. So KD and him had this spat back in December. In December. And he's and airing then it now. Rappaport just randomly is airing it now. Correction, please. Yeah. So I mean, so, so so that in and of itself, because he is airing it now, that leads me to believe that this is some kind of staged social media event. Like, why you? Can, Rappaport just lose a lawsuit with Barstool. Like, why are you waiting until why are you waiting until March, right? Like, it happened in December. You want to let it go now, and then he has this back and forth with Barstool and and the Barstool president right. and like all that crap. This just smells like we're fishing for attention and we're you know something some right. announcements coming and we're just trying to generate buzz around it. But regardless, and I know we there there are other KD uh, tweets where you know fans were coming at him because the Nets are like amassing the Monstars team and they're calling them soft and he's going oh yeah you gotta go to super teams right and, he, and he's going back and forth all this is telling me is this dude cannot wait to get back on the basketball court right that, that's that's what this is telling me is that once the, the KD itchy Twitter fingers are going that's when you know it's like alright he, he's, he's like He's starting to feel good. He's like, all right, man, we got to get back on the court, get this hoop thing going. I'm, I'm excited. I'm hyped, right? Because I'm really going to, you know, take off the last part of the season into the playoffs and we're going to start rolling. And that's, that's what I see it as. Is that, and plus, you know, KD said it before. He is a person with a social media account. So he's going to go on and do what people do on social media, which is while out and, you know, beef with other people and, you know, not take the medium seriously. And there's a, a tweet where someone said to him, dude, you got to just chill and relax. And he went on and he's like, no chill, no relax. I'm on Twitter. I'm never going to relax, right? Like, and, I, and part of it is he's, he's, he's oh. leaning into it, right? And that's the idea. If people are going to criticize him for constantly being on social media, he's leaning into it now. He's like, all right, since that's what you guys say that I... I'm gonna just I'm gonna just be what you say I am then, and he's gonna like respond to everything, lean in, and like I have a feeling he's getting a kick out of this when he's doing it at home and like laughing oh. and and enjoying himself, right? Because like all right, this is what y'all think. I'm gonna go out and put this stuff out there and continue to feed the flame, or as he qu said, it, "quote I will continue to fulfill the prophecy," <laughs> which is which is hilarious. It's just it's fantastic. It is it is fantastic. He is something else. He's funny, man. I mean, hey, um, that that exchange was quite interesting. I wonder if he has anything, if he'll say anything now. Um, but oof. And Michael Rappaport, come on, man. I mean, Rap's a clown. Like, let's just come on. We we we've we've known about this dude forever. He's a clown. It's just it's funny to me because I think what what is so interesting for people about this is, and I've said this before. Katie is not your typical superstar, right? Like in the sense that his social media presence, his social media presence makes him more like us, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, like of all the superstar NBA guys, none of them go back and forth on Twitter like this. No. I mean, you may see a little bit here and there, but no one, Katie does it like, right? And it gives the appearance as, oh, we're above this, right? 
even though in reality, you know, people just do it differently. Like, LeBron's constantly subtweeting and doing, like, you know, digs at people. He just does it in a different way, right? Like, he'll post something like, I remember when Lonzo, uh, LaMelo Ball had said, no, I don't, I don't look up to LeBron, like, in that way. I look up to my dad, like, whatever. And then LeBron posted that whole, like, series of Instagram stories of, like, you know, people looking at him dunking. It's just like, that was LeBron, like, right? So in that manner, LeBron was being petty, right? But he does it, he does it in a different way. Whereas Kevin Durant is like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to subtweet it. I'm just going to be straight up petty and respond to you. Like, I'm not, right? And it's just, and, but that's how we all do it. Like that, like those of us who engage in that kind of online behavior, that's how regular people do it. And I think that's the part that is so, that is so disarming to the everyday and regular person. We see these people, these mythical godlike figures because they do these incredible things. And I say it all the time, in reality, they're just people like us. Like, they just happen to be really good at basketball. That's all, right? Like, that's all. They're just peeps. <laughs> but they're really, really good at basketball. That's all. <laughs> hey, sometimes people can't separate it like we can draw. This is why we're gifted. Listen, honey. listen, we're special. That's all I can say. <laughs> I know, I know. And um, I just wanted to remind you, so you could put it in your calendar, um, that you have plans on July 16th. What because is oh, yes? What is that? The release date of Space Jam. <laughs> now, you know, I have zero desire or interest to see that movie. You Go know. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell everybody why. Because oh. you oh. haven't. No. What? Uh, I haven't seen the original. Everyone knows that. Look, look. It, I, I've, said, I've said this before. That, that cartoon movie came out when I was 18 years old. I, I'm, I took myself way too seriously to watch cartoon basketball movies. Like, I'm not. I'm like, no. It was half cartoon, Michael and, Jordan. And in the years since, it has been a matter of pride to hold out and not see it. Because everyone's like, it's so great. So guess what? Guess what? Space Jam 2 will not be seeing that either. But you guys can tell me how good it is about the new Monstars or whatever else and all that craziness. Just let me know. <laughs> The fact that you actually, and I can't believe I didn't catch this sooner, I'm mad at myself, that you made a Monstars reference in the beginning of this episode. I've, I've, been, I've been dropping it in all the time, calling them Monstars. <laughs> well, you know what, guys? I can't wait to post this on social media <laughs> and get people's opinions that Gerard has not seen oh, Space Jam. Since, since social media tends to skew younger, oh, they're going to be up in arms. Like, how could you never? And I'll be like, again, like... I, I, <laughs> You you kids were like six when that movie came out. So, of course you saw it. I was 18. No, no I'm watching cartoon basketball. Sorry. <laughs> to keep things completely fair, as an adult in my current day, I still watch it. Well, listen. Hey, to each his own. So, there's that. <laughs> to but each his own. Before it gets nasty up in here, Dry, why don't you just <laughs> tell them where they can find us? Guys, you know where to find us. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. We are at 7 Footers Pod on Twitter, at 7 Footers Podcast on Instagram at JS Hector, at Jenna Lemon Selly. And guys, look, we got about mm, 25 games or so left. You know, playoffs are coming sooner than we think. So Bittersweet. teams got to start getting healthy. Lakers, Nets, and other teams are rolling. Jazz are rolling. Nuggets are rolling. Look, Sixers are playing well. Had, didn't have Embiid for quite a stretch. He's coming back right. possibly end of this week. It's going to, now it's about playoff seating, right? Who's going to end up where in the seating? And that's going to matter, right? Because if you're in the Eastern Conference, and you have designs on coming out of the East, look, you got to play whoever's in front of you. So I'm not saying you, you, you try to avoid certain people, but it will be much easier to come out of the East if you don't have to play two of those teams, right? Like, right. So if you're Milwaukee, you don't want to have to play Brooklyn and Philly to get out. If, if you're Philly, you don't want to have to play Brooklyn and Milwaukee to get out. If you're the Nets, you don't want to have to play Philly and Milwaukee to get out, right? Like, it's you hope that you play one of them to get on. Now look, if you got to play two, you got to play two. But that'll mean your road is much harder. In the West, same idea, right? You want to lock up that one seed if you're the Jazz, because you don't have to play the Lakers and the Clippers to get out, right? That that these are the things you're looking at. So it'll That's be interesting to see. Seating. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it, guys. We will be back to chit chat next week. So keep tuning in. Check out the new episode. This will be out soon. And we love you guys. Peace.
spent a couple years out here with these raps Trying to have a plan that we may come true Plotted some jobs, but I ain't hit back I don't want to trap, what's a man gonna do? Chevy told me come 